gospel of the Lord. My friends, some years ago, a religious writer told the story about a little village somewhere in Maine that was soon doomed to extinction. You see, the state was building a dam on the river and had bought up all the land that would be covered by the resulting lake. The little village was part of that land, so all who lived there knew that their days were numbered. In a couple of years, the dam would be complete, the water would start to rise, and the village would cease to be. Now, the impact of that impending doom was immediate and obvious. All maintenance and improvement came to a sudden stop. No one pulled a weed, planted a flower, painted a fence, or patched a roof. Week by week, that little village deteriorated. The shops closed and the people moved away. Finally, someone made a crude sign and put it at the edge of town. This is what the sign said. Where there is no faith in the future, there is no power in the present. That story has special meaning for us today because it describes a spiritual impact which the death of Jesus had on his followers and disciples. They were more than grieved. They were devastated. Their hopes were utterly shattered. Their faith in the future was utterly destroyed. They were convinced that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. Everywhere he went, crowds gathered to hear his voice, to, to feel his strength, and hopefully observe some miraculous deed. Then, just as quickly as his fame had arisen, the tide turned against him. And almost before they knew what was happening, he was nailed to a cross between two thieves. You talk about devastation. They were in the state of shock. At the very point when they had come to expect so much, suddenly it was all over. Jesus was dead, and for his followers, there appeared to be nothing to look forward to. But then, totally unexpected, something happened that changed everything. Early, one Sunday morning, that Sunday morning, women came to the tomb to anoint the dead body of Jesus. But upon arrival, they discovered that the stone had been rolled away, and an angel appeared and explained to them, Jesus is not here. He has been raised just exactly as he promised. Go quickly, one of the Gospels says, and tell his disciples that he goes to the Galilee ahead of them. Those were the words that gave Jesus' followers a brand new perspective on life, because God had somehow now become a major factor in the death of Jesus. But divine power was only part of the story. There was also divine mercy. Jesus' followers had all deserted him in his hour of need. They were turncoats, they were cowards, and they knew it. But now, Jesus had been risen, and the message came, meet me in the Galilee. For these imperfect followers, living in an imperfect world, the resurrection of Christ had convinced them of one thing. A God of power and a God of mercy was really with them and actually involved in their daily lives. I wonder, have we ever made that own discovery in our own life? Could it be that we sometimes live on the wrong side of Easter? We too live in an imperfect world and we are not perfect people. Sometimes we are left with no faith in the future and no power in the present. But let us not forget that Christ is risen and goes before us. We are not alone. A God of power and a God of mercy is actually involved in your life 
in my life. That alone means that there is a future for us and for our world.